Welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break, your home for current community talk, with Patricia Duart, Darlene Hayes, and Connie Wright. Well, hello, and welcome to Hopkinton Coffee Break. Aren't we excited for this new set? This is the first time that we've seen this, or at least I have. And yeah, thank you, H Camp. I saw it at Meet the Candidates tonight. I came over. I, take, I actually posted up some pictures of it. Oh, yeah. Well, I saw those. And then, but this seeing it live and uber comfortable. Oh, yeah. Really straight. comfortable. New Absolutely. Coffee new coffee yeah. table. And it grows. There's more pieces <clears throat> that we don't see. So, yeah. And the cameras. So, if there's glitches today, this is the first time they're being used. They're right. We don't know where to look, but no, hopefully we don't know where to look. <laughs> no, it's all um, great. New robotic cameras. So it's really, really awesome. Yeah, HCAM does well. It does, yeah, it yeah. does. So we were, we're missing Connie today, who is uh, visiting with her daughter and family. Daughter is uh, graduating from Pratt as a fashion design major and had her, was, was uh, appointed one of few for um, showing her fashion show in the senior program. Right, I think it was less than 15 kids chosen. Yeah, so kudos to Cameron and Connie's having a ball there with her. You know, Pratt, very uh, artistic and edgy, edgy and cool. Yeah. yeah. Yep. But speaking of young folks and accomplishments, we have as our guest today, Connor Deegan, who is a resident of Hopkinton and a neighbor of mine for yeah. many, many years. So how long have you lived in Hopkinton? I have lived in Hopkinton for 18 years. 18 years. So not quite your whole life. No, not quite my whole life. I moved here when I was four uh, right before starting kindergarten. Okay. So you probably don't even remember before here. No, not really. I remember very little bits and pieces, but all of my childhood memories were all Hopkinton. Yeah. Yep. So it was always on um, the neighborhood you live in now? Yep. Uh, we moved there right as the house was built and have lived there ever since. Well, you know, I think, I don't know if your house was built when we, were, when we moved in. When we came in 97, do you remember? I think yeah. we came in in 96. Yeah, because I always think of your family and ours and a few others as the, is well, it, no, is it like kind of the earlier settlers? Yeah, it's kind of the, it's the, the originals. The originals. Who, like with the whole Saddle With all the block Daniel party. Shales yeah, area. exactly. It was all that, like, one section of Saddle Hill and then all of Daniel Shays. We were all the ones who went to the block party together. We yeah. All did, yeah, it was all the community stuff that we did together. So it's been a, it's been a, a long-term friendship and, yeah. you know, but putting it out there, the, the thing that we're very excited about and having you on as you are the, you know, the youngest candidate running for an office here in Hopkinton. Connor Deegan is running for town clerk. Congratulations for stepping up in that way. Thank you very much. Yeah, he, he actually ran for office last year and won too, you know. He actually um, ran last year and is on the Housing Authority. Yeah, I'm and vice chair of the Housing Authority now and I've been, uh, I've been with them for now a year and it's been had its ups and downs with crazy things to deal with but it's been an awesome ride the whole way i think it's an interesting year at the housing authority too because this is the first year that we have actually shared an executive director of the housing authority with another community so oh, really we share it with westbro and that's new i mean my my introduction to the housing authority is actually through carolyn dykema and andrew okay because that's where andrew did his eagle scout project and um so we ended up spending a good deal hundreds of hours at times at the Hopkinton Housing Authority. And it is different from the senior center and that okay. people a lot of times think they're yeah, the they same and they're not. they sometimes clump them together because they're, they're right next to each other. Yeah, and they're I think very maybe different people, needs, right? I, th I think the dynamic of having a executive director that actually represents two towns might be something to share too. Well, it's actually really interesting. We started looking into it because there were a few different towns that had started doing this and it, we looked at it as a way to save money because you don't then need to pay any money towards pensions or uh, health care or anything like that. All you do is you pay the set amount towards uh, the town with the management agreement. Okay. So we pay a certain amount to Westboro every month. Okay. And that covers both maintenance and management. All right. So making some kind of contribution towards that. Yeah. Um, for her. That's awesome. And it allows us to split our human resources and actually, uh, and they all, they work pretty much part-time at both anyway. I was just so going to say, two part-time jobs mm -hmm. melded together. Exactly. To sort of two communities. But they have, but um, Linda Strand, who is our now executive director and joint executive director, mm -hmm. she is, she always has very set office hours for when she's in yes. either one and lets everyone know. And she usually will like switch them if she 
sees that like someone needs to see her. She's always been very accommodating. Very flexible. She yeah. started a lot of really great programs with us too, mm -hmm. um, and really helped us to better the Hopkins Housing Authority, which wow. is really great. Well, I'd love to hear about that kind of innovation. What That's are, awesome. What are some of the programs going on there? Because I know that there are things where like they've had they have dinners, they have different outreach, game times, things like that. But a lot of the transportation is actually is bundled with the senior center. Um, uh, a lot of the times, the things that we do that are for the housing authority alone actually just happen right there in the community center. Uh, so we do things like every year there's a Christmas party that's really mm -hmm. fun. And uh, Linda was trying to invite people from all over the community along with uh, everyone who lives at the ho and works at the housing authority. Well, how, so, many, how many residents are at the housing authority now? It's several hundred, isn't it? Yes. Uh, we have about we have 40 plus uh senior units and then we have a dozen uh family home units and for those in the audience who aren't familiar with the um, hopkinton housing authority what what is its purpose or what does it des describe as its mission the hopkinton housing authority is meant to provide affordable and adequate housing to residents of town that may not be able to afford the increased standard of living that keeps going, but still give them that quality. The quality of life, yeah, so, okay, excellent. And so, yeah, we managed to do that by, uh, we, we still collect rent yes. with the Hopkinton Housing Authority. Some don't so, do that, some just work off of like the checks that come from the state. Okay. But we do it and it ends up resulting in people who have lived in town all their lives can move there and. Mm -hmm. be able to live there and then we can still provide amazing programs and events for them. So the residents do pay some rent so it's subsidized yep. in, in some way which yeah. is awesome. I mean I think it's always been nicknamed as like Davis Road and people always looking at it as the senior housing but it's also disabled special needs people there. Exactly. That's yep. awesome. And that you know when you go past the whole Davis Road those 12 individual homes are actually really nice. They have they a are. little playground in the middle mm -hmm. for them. Yeah that's the the Mayhew Court section. It's right. all um, family housing. And, and people yeah. don't even know it exists. Yeah, because it's kind of nestled behind the uh, behind both Davis Road and the Senior Center. You have to go sure. through the Senior Center to even get there. So you've been on the board now for how long? For about a year now. Okay. So what, what I find so fascinating about you, Connor, is that you know, and and you know, I do executive search and organizational development work and meet people, um, young people who major in political science and, and those sorts of degrees. And we'll talk a little bit about yours who are looking for how to apply that in the world. And um, I just really admire how you decided to look in your own community in terms of how you could apply your interests um, here locally. So tell us a little bit about this inspiration to serve in, in uh, well, the legislative or the gov governmental processes. Yeah. Well, actually, originally I had started out in, I thought the best thing to do with my political science degree would be go and work on campaigns. And I did that for a while, and then kind of slowly decided that I wasn't really making an impact that I felt like I was actually helping people. I was mm. helping some people get elected, but I wasn't really helping, you know, the greater the, good, the greater yeah, good, the greater good yeah. or the common man on the street type thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so I decided I wanted to go and see if I could pursue something in municipal government. So I basically just started from scratch, mm -hmm. and I decided to come back to Hopkinton where else better to look than my hometown? Mm -hmm. And I, uh, I heard from you, actually, mm -hmm. that Jerry Holland had been looking for extra hands in the town clerk's office. That's and, right. Uh, that afternoon, I called her up and asked if we, she would uh, mind having me on, and mm -hmm. she wanted to meet with me for it. Uh, and then as I continued to get more and more involved, I saw that we were making such a positive impact on the community and the town clerk made such a positive impact on the community. It really inspired your interest. I think so, one of the things that you guys did, you did with Jerry Lesher was really cool was the Elmwood School event. Yeah, we, uh, I, I was talking about her during my first week about how when I was in Rhode Island for school, I had done a program where we went to local high schools and did a mock election with a mock vote mm -hmm. to let them learn how to how the process worked. Right. And then Jerry was saying that she really wanted to do that with 
uh, some of the elementary schoolers mm -hmm. and show them how the process worked. So uh, she came up with the idea and we planned the whole election of uh, choosing what the next dog license would be and the <laughs> second graders over at Elmwood all voted on it. So the creativity, I, I'm just, uh, that, that's so fun. That's so fun. But, you know, so thinking back to when you were in college, what were a lot of your classmates thinking about doing with their political science uh, degrees? And a lot of the ones who were in, um, who did the same focus as me as going into, you know, American politics mm -hmm. and uh, with state and local government as their primary focus, were either looking at going um, into campaigns and elections mm -hmm. or they were looking at going straight into law school. Okay. Uh, okay. Otherwise, a lot of them ended up splitting off into foreign relations and now yeah. are all working in like Washington or mm -hmm. uh, for in any of the state capitals for any kind of relations department. Right. Where'd right. you go to school? Roger Williams University. Oh, that's you a came beautiful campus right there on the water. It is right on the water. Uh, I have a funny Roger Williams story. Um, totally <laughs> off target, but um, my dad grew up in Federal Hill in Rhode Island. Oh, yeah. Okay. And so um, Roger Williams started off as a junior college in the upstairs of the Y in Providence. Yep. And so while... <laughs> well, this while was many, dad, many years ago. <laughs> well, before my dad went into the service, he had already gotten his um, associate's degree from Roger Williams. He'd wor he had gotten out of high school. They didn't have enough money for him to go to college. Knew he'd end up being drafted. Um, so he'd work at the grocery store delivering. He worked at like a local meat market. Mm -hmm. He was delivering stuff. And then at night he, and um, weekends, he was going to Roger Williams upstairs at the Y, he said he had to climb three flights of stairs to get there. Mm -hmm. They only offered like four programs and one of them happened to be a associates in, um, he's gonna call it radar engineering, but I think it was basically like ham radio okay. and things like that where he mm -hmm. started off at. And eventually, you know, went to the Army and finished up at BU and stuff, but that, wow. you know, Roger Williams has grown oh, a it's ton. beautiful now. It has, actually. It you can major in sailing now. <laughs> <laughs> they Did you just learn built to sail? New, <laughs> I didn't yeah. learn to sail. They have a huge sailing team that's like, gets national recognition. Yeah, it's okay. one of the best in the and world, And they actually. just built a brand new sailing center, which is lovely. Yeah. Their crew team is out of this world, too. Their crew team, but their crew team is only a club team, too. Wow. That campus and probably Salve, Virginia are probably two of the most beautiful campuses in New England. Yeah, yeah they are beautiful. Definitely. So my husband went to URI, which he's <coughs> quite proud of, and loved yeah. it down there in Kingston, which is a gorgeous area. Too. I have friends who went there, too, yeah. My next door yeah. neighbor's graduating from URI next week. Ah. Um, did you know Skylar Wright? And the yeah. right kids. Jamie I, Wright would probably yeah, be better on you. He graduated from Mass College, all right, but um, she, and she's been on the crew team, team at URI and been on a campus closer to water because of that. Yep. Um, so, kind of, when you were in high school here in Hopkinton, were you thinking about um, what were you thinking about in terms of your future? Did you have any idea you'd want to major in political science? And I wasn't entirely sure, to be honest, when I was in high school. I was still. I mean, most people who were in my position of being a little undecided when mm -hmm. I was in high school, probably would have gone in with a, um, like an undeclared degree. Mm -hmm. But I decided I really wanted to go in with something. So I, I looked and I kind of juggled with maybe doing business because I had really enjoyed business courses I took with the high school. Right. And uh, the other one I had looked at was political science because I had, had a real passion for politics and mm -hmm. even political theory and mm -hmm. how uh, the different tiers of government worked. And so I decided that I was going to go, and I'd seen really great things at Roger Williams and decided, OK, I'm going to pursue political science, and I'm going to go to Roger Williams for it. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's, uh, and I, I didn't really know at first what I wanted to do. I thought I could do campaigns and elections with this. I might want to, uh, maybe I'll run for an office one day. Maybe I'll like, be a staffer for some major politician in D.C. or in Boston, who knows? Mm -hmm. so now and you, you may do any of your office. Yeah, now and I am running for office. Yeah. You know, and, and see, lear learning what it is from the, from the ground up, from the yep. grassroots, which is an awesome thing. We're seeing your signs everywhere, yeah. which is kind of cool. Um, so even that, I have to, you know, for folks who, who don't do the political thing, how do you, I mean, who designs your signs? They're awesome. They're, is that something you do or you get a graphic artist or how's that work? I actually have a really good friend from college. Uh, I, there are a couple, and uh, I was in their wedding party, and so and we've maintained our friendship uh, since graduation. And she's a graphic designer, mm -hmm. so I asked her if she would be willing to come and help me design a sign because I didn't want the same generic sign that I see 
every time I drive around uh, any town around election time. Right, yeah. I wanted to see something that popped at me. It was a little different. Mm -hmm. And it does. It's actually an excellent sign. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, and it, and uh, well, I'm thanking her. <laughs> you, you just have to put them in the back of your car and put them up. You know, that's we we <laughs> spent we spent three hours on the couch working on the design. One of those hours was just working on the D. Uh huh. Sure. Uh, it takes a while to come yeah. up with stuff. Yeah. And so we uh, we did that, and it was it took a lot of time. And then she did all the finishing touches while I had to run off to a housing authority meeting. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, it was and it came out perfect. I was absolutely amazed and I was like I've this has got to be my sign uh, I had seen Darlene for coffee we were talking to her about the sign at one point and I was she's like you don't need to do anything special for the sign just do two colors your name in one color background in the other and, <laughs> and then I end up doing practical. Michael's in three colors <laughs> yeah, and, and then I said and well Claire just take a look colors. at it and yeah. I showed her on my phone and she's like wow <laughs> Well, you know, that's, that's what's fun. Whatever role you do, whatever job, I mean, to put, it, put your own creativity in it. You know, that that's kind of uh, a theme that I'm hearing just in talking with you. Um, you know, creativity, being innovative, you know, pulling your friend from college, you know, whatever other people do for coming up with designs, you know, kind of tapping a resource that you have in your network, yeah. which is a good thing. Absolutely. I think one of the, the neat things about you running and stuff is your age. I mean, I think one of it is it's bringing a fresh air um, we just got through what I call the carnival democracy in town, the, you know, the town meeting. Um, and honestly, we get to a point now that we're allowing 130 people, and yes, I'm one of them, but to decide how we spend $80 million of money and different things proactive, and that whether eventually we go to, I know that it has to be bylaw changes on a Saturday town meeting, or maybe we could open up to more people, whether we go to a, you know, an elected representative town meeting, but, there's got to be something that we change moving forward. There's 130 Absolutely. people making decisions in a book that thick with every, you know, that Detail, oh my God. You know, 52% yeah. of it, you know, is school budget. I understand that, but, it, you know, then people complain and say, you know, it's all the same people. It's like, well, no, a bunch of us are dead now, too. That, that, <laughs> we you have know, to thank the folks who go out, you know. It, it, but uh, if you don't go. Challenging or not, but. If, if you don't attend, you have no say in it. And if you don't read the articles, you have no say in it. And so that, yes, the 130 people who show up are going to make decisions on how we spend $80 million of your money. Right. And we have so many ways now to be informed in town, which is so awesome that, especially with uh, eHop now coming yeah. in, showing all this n stuff and including all this information, all of the articles. Right. That was great i was so glad to see that, that was helpful and you know social media through these mediums yep. helps yeah. a lot to kind of you know take people through the steps um and the information i think i mean i saw a few new faces at town meeting this year and I, and some that have actually been in town a while that have not been regulars your parents being one of them um <laughs> not, not that, but i'm one the, of them i'm not a regular say, but to say that you know i think you know ehop did a thing on you know here at h camp too but that there was some conversation on social media yesterday saying, I didn't even know what was happening. And right. I'm like, wait a second. It's, it's been in the Independent. It's been on HCAM. It's been on the Hop News. It's banners hung all over town. It's in every insert. There's but like lawn signs, everything. Those, but that just is just another data point that somehow there's still more work to be done to and engage just, uh, people, the 99% of folks in town who aren't we aware of We get less than 1%. Yeah of our residents that turn out at town meeting. Right. Well, you have to understand. And then a I whole mean, bunch of them leave after one article that, yeah, they, wanted, that they came absolutely. for. Well, and then, so if you are from Massachusetts, it is, a, it is an amazing awakening town meeting. Um, I think those from the state are used to this. Not every town does, ta you know, the small ones do. But it, it is an amazing, I mean, I encourage everyone to go, obviously, you know. Um, but I can just say that, you know, I mean, I hate to, I'm embarrassed to say I'm not, I don't go every year. It's it's a big ask. I mean, I it's like a big it ask. because I like watching the whole process of it. But then I look at like a town like Dover, mm -hmm. six thousand residents, eight hundred people show up at town meeting. Uh, Why are they committed? Why do they go? We need Why to don't we just go? explore what their secret sauce is? Because around. they must they know, must be selling they, hot dogs there or something. Uh, Coffee. They, they must be <laughs> something <wild> because um, <laughs> they must be selling food. So it it it's not the. It, Maybe there's a change in the process. Maybe there's a change in how we do it, where we do it. 
you know, maybe it should be a TJ Spirits. I don't know, Cornell. <laughs> but <laughs> there's something that is not where, yeah, you know, we need to find Dover, out what Dover that is. is fairly close to us. So, I mean, right. a town that's, you know, two towns away turns out 12% of their population at a town meeting, and we turn out 1%. Right. And it's, I don't think sad. their residents are any di broadly different. I think there must be something. It'd be interesting to find out. Actually, what one in. thing that I gathered when I was, I was very, I was pushing people, like, go to town meeting. Even if, I, I don't care what you're going to vote on, whatever it is, you should go, make your voice heard. Uh, and when I was talking to them, a lot of people who I was talking to who were new parents in town, they had, like, right. just moved recently, they were really nervous that it was something that they wouldn't be able to fully be involved in. That it was something that it was only the old town people went to. Well, and it does feel a little bit, you know, the, the process, while designed to be fair and um, objective and it, orderly, is confusing and the language, I mean, it's not the way we normally talk about things. It's all in, in archaic and I parliamentary like, procedure. I, exactly. I also feel like every article should have a pro and a con to it. Exactly. You know, all we do is say, this is the article that's up to vote for. And, here's and people what line up to give their opinion. Here's the recommendation. And, here, and right. here's the recommendation who did it. Not, but there's no con on it. There's no pro for it. There's nothing that is a balance on so people can weigh against it right. even, or weigh for it. Right. I mean, because some things are against something, how the article is written. You'd be voting against something. Um, and I think, that I think those have to be better explained. I don't know if they need to go, you know, in handouts from the school. I, they, they somehow have to get into more younger people coming. And I think Connor will be a key in trying to help that. I think um, reaching out to younger voters. I know that I'm working with someone now to actually build a, an event called Rock the Vote that will happen probably sometime at the end of June or in July. Which would be perfect because and the biggest it, problem is just getting people to get there. And it's bipartisan and it'll be a basically a rock concert with all the voter stuff, you know, and it'll be open to any party, you know, candidates, new candidate, you know, new elected offices to come and introduce themselves to 18 to 21 year olds. Mm -hmm. No alcohol and just a chance to, if you haven't registered, register. It's a, you know, it's a presidential year and it's a big deal. Yeah. I mean, we're about to, this selection is a big deal. Absolutely. Well, we, we, we want to switch gears to get to some community updates, yeah. too. But th th we're excited about what you're, what you're facing, what you've stepped up to do, and uh, wish you all the luck of the world. Well, thank you very much. Absolutely. Absolutely. So, darling, what's going on in town? Uh, in, well, in town, I think Art and Bloom is still in ha is, um, going on at, at um, HCA. Uh, tonight at HCA, um, Barbara Kessler's um, once a month open mic night mm -hmm. is tonight. Um, Tomorrow night at Front Street Concerts is a their in-house um, musician in-house. And uh, I know a lot of people don't know what Front Street Concerts is. I mean, at that's Front Street Concerts, you have to RSVP in advance. It is at a private home. Google it, I so guess. Google it, and you can <laughs> check it out. But um, the tonight, tomorrow night is a Brazilian um, repertoire of very historic Brazilian music. So I'm going to check that out. Um, a couple things that are, are needs in the community. Mm -hmm. um, there's a woman named Carolyn McGibbon who's become the regional rep for foreign exchange students. And we'll put up her name at the end of the show or something on how to reach to Carolyn. But um, they have about six uh, students, uh, some Europeans, um, Italian, and um, Asian students that actually really desperately need to be placed. If you take one of these students, there is a stipend. The families receive $900 a month. Um, it's a very fulfilling, you can um, be an empty nester. Actually, one um, family in town is an empty nester, and mm -hmm. they're taking two children. Oh, wow. And stuff. Mm -hmm. um, her son is actually going to be... Um, and you host him for a school year. You right? host him for the whole school year. Mm -hmm. Her son, the woman that's doing this, her son is actually going to be a foreign exchange student in France next oh, year. Oh, so and pay so it back, pay it forward. And, and it's kind of funny, her son's name is Boston, and um, <laughs> they're taking in an Italian one. So I told her, her that we've just now nicknamed him the... Um, the new boss, and we're calling him. We're going to call him North End all next year. Oh, yeah. um, he's in the I was thinking Rome, but no, that no, was North, he'll be North End. No, North End, because he's taking Boston's room for the okay. year. Uh, but um, I would reach out to Carol McGibbon. It is a very fulfilling um, experience for the families that have been involved. We've known several families that have loved it and done it year after year after year. How do people find out more or reach her? We'll, we'll put it up there. But um, Carol McGibbon, it's a um, her. Um, Facebook and uh, phone number or email, we'll, we'll get up here on the site and um, we'll also post it up on Real Housewives okay. to get to know her. And she's been posting up on Real Housewives too. Okay. So if you have any interest in that. The other person who reached out to me is um, Officer Phil Powers. Okay. And for years, when my husband worked Tuesday through Saturday, so 
God help me that these were Saturdays <laughs> with little kids. But one of the things was every year we look forward to this um, fishing derby the police do. They do it at the Sportsman's Club. It's a week from Saturday. They have had very little sign-ups. And I'm going to tell you now, they feed you donuts in the morning, pizza and hot dogs in the afternoon. Um, I had to touch worms because my husband worked on Saturdays. I had one <laughs> in a stroller. But there's, every kid gets prizes. It, everybody catches a fish because they're basically floating on top. They loaded so many. But please <laughs> check it out. If you've got young kids under 10, it's a, next Saturday morning. It's a blast. Tons of fun. Have you ever done it? I haven't, but I've done like these fishing things at other in other locations, mm -hmm. and they're always so much fun. Yeah, and it's just great to go out there with like your family and being able to do that. Like especially when you're when you're younger, little, when you're a little yeah. kid, it's so much fun to like. Especially when you know you're going to catch something, you don't have to do the whole long waiting you period. You bring poles. You got to bring a you, pole, or you bring some. I mean, we would go to like you know Target. We had like oh, a little, sure, a little we, had, baby, we yeah. had a little plastic Snoopy one that we would be right. catching with, and then eventually we brought like one of Michael's with us. So Melissa would have the Snoopy one, and she'd be in like the jogging stroller, oh. just holding it, and then uh, Andrew would be like wandering. Around. But we actually made it a play group activity. Sure. So um, if moms groups or play groups are interested, we actually went together, met there, all hung out together, and we kind of you know, tripped and fell over like rocks and things in the water and stuff like that. But the kids had a great, great time. So where is this? The so Sportsman's, Sportsman's Club, Club is on Club. Lumber okay. Street in Hopkinton. Um, before you get to the whole Glen Road neighborhood, if you're okay. coming from um, Main Street, okay. it's on the left. It's, it, you barely notice the building. It's a light beige building. You pull in there and park and the, the, the stock pond is right below that. Oh, fun. And um, yeah, it's a blast. I know LMPA is doing a fishing derby for kids too, coming up too. Yeah. So that'll be at my lake at Lake Maspinaw. Oh, well that's. But um, that, that's a lot of what's going on. I know, um, you know, we're getting ready for, you know, election is coming up on the 16th. So I think a lot of focus All then. Right. So come out and vote everybody, May 16th. Yep. You know. Um, so you're, yeah. We have six contested races. So there's a lot of mm -hmm. people out there running, a lot of people getting involved and raising their hand. You know, Connor's raising his hand as a very young person, but there are people who are raising their hand in their 70s to people who have never done this before. Right. I mean, even my husband's running for constable. He's never run before, but has always had an interest in basically some municipal and maybe eventually becoming like an associate police officer or something mm, like that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is people really doing things for the first time. I know that, you know, Jennifer Flanagan is running for Board of Health. She's never run. Kelly Carp has never run but have actually given a ton to the community on their own. And so right. it's a neat way. And yeah, there's definitely incumbents and things like that, but to see a broadness that, and I, I think a lot of that has been bridged from what's going on nationally. Right. Wanting to get involved, that, you know, politics are on the news 24 seven now. Exactly. So if you can get involved on a local level, whether it's, and there's tons of volunteer groups. Oh, what else is coming up is, if you're interested in being on Art in the Trail, your application's due May 15th. Reach out to Jeff Barnes on the Trail Committee and Conservation Committee. He'll get you an application. Wow. And I know we're going to do one. We're I talking know, about it. We're going to come up with our the, idea. Uh, <laughs> I, know the, I know I'm part of the library trustees right now, and they're going to be doing one. So it's, it's, it's a neat thing. That's fun. I know Jerry Holland is um, helping create one that's um, called Inspire, and it's going to um, encompass um, uh, Bay Pass, Serenity House, and Project Just Because on how inspiring within the community. So that's a uh, center trail, which we'll be able to see a little bit more this spring. Yeah, awesome. that, yeah, yeah. Our, 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 I think the, it actually happens, like the walk happens, the, that's my watch ringing. <laughs> so I'm totally distracted, but. Um, yeah. Well, the trail is opened up now. I actually just. Yeah, the uh, trail's open, but the art goes in. I think we do the application is due by May 15th. I think we actually do the art the end of August. Oh. Wow, that far into the season. You have to, well, they have to plan and then people get spaces and stuff like that. Well, as we, as we wrap up today for our uh, discussion with you, and just what you've announced in terms of all the activity around the, the, the election coming up, just big thanks to you, big thanks to everyone who participates in the Tens Town meeting and who has stepped up to uh, run for office. And, and then do you have a, wait, a website or a Facebook page? Yeah. Yes, I do. I have a Facebook page. Uh, it's a Deegan for... Town yeah, clerk. it's Deegan, Connor Deegan for Town Clerk. So you can look him up on Connor Deegan for Town Clerk, ways to get involved and check out um, yep. Connor's bio. Check out all the candidates, um, incumbents, new faces, new voices. It's all good. All right. All right. Thank you for joining right. us, Connor. Have a good weekend. Thank you for having Thanks me. Thanks for being on, everyone. See you soon.